The Benny rehearsal has just finished, and Phil is driving Jack home in his new convertible. Gee, this is a swell car, Phil. Really a beaut. Glad you like it, Dad. It's the newest thing. Boy, what a car you've got. Look at all the accessories on it. Phil, what's this button here marked 8C? Oh, that's the ventilator. Hot and cold. Ah. And what's this one here, BL? That's the light, bright and low. Gee, what a car. And what's this thing, Mark? DB. You cross button? No, draft beer. <laughs> beer? Yeah, here. Hold this glass under it and press it. The button here? Okay. <laughs> Holy smoke. Now press the button next to it. All right. Well, I'll be darned. You've even got a gadget to blow the foam off. <laughs> what a car. Say, Jackson. Uh, what? Look, uh, look down at the gas pedal. Well, isn't that cute? A little brass rail. <laughs> You know, Phil, I should have expected something like this. When I got in the car, I came through swinging doors. <laughs> hey, watch it, Phil. Don't drive so fast. Sit back, Jackson, and enjoy your beer. You'll find the pretzels in the glove compartment. <laughs> I don't want any pretzels. And you better stop. There's a red light I there. I see it. I see it. Here you are. Get your evening paper. Get your evening paper. Hey, look at the headline. U.N. Forces Advance. Paper, mister? No, thanks. Gee, rough and tumble when Santa needed derby. Don't you want a paper, mister? No, thanks. <laughs> Daring daylight payroll robbery. Look, mister, if you like, I'll get in the back seat and read it to you. <laughs> no, no, you have to be over 21 to get in this car. <laughs> Drive on, Phil. I got to hand it to you, Phil, though. This is really some automobile. Yeah, of course, after I got the car, I put in all them gadgets myself. Oh, well, how much did the car cost? I don't know. Alice never told me. <laughs> oh, Alice bought the car. Well, is it in your name or hers? Well, to be honest with you, Jackson, I don't know how she registers it. Well, who has the pink slip? Well, to tell you the truth, I... Wait, don't... <laughs> Hey, Jackson, uh, throw me that line again, will you? I said, who has the pink pill? You're packing my house. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, so long. But, Phil, you didn't answer me. Who has the pink slip? Let it go, Jackson. You've got too much talent to be a straight man. <laughs> so long, Dad. Goodbye. Gee. Yeah, Phil sure has a beautiful car. The new Hudson. The kind you fall down into. Yeah, <laughs> see my front yard looks nice. The turnips are coming up. The lettuce is almost ready to pick. The rhubarb makes such a nice head. Next spring, I think I... <laughs> Easy, bossy, easy. Nice pal. Oh, gee, it's sure good to get... Oh, out. hello, Mr. Benny. You're home early. Yeah, yeah, Rochester. Hey, how come you're sprawled out in the couch? Uh, did you have a hard day? Well, I... Uh... Did you clean out the closets like I told you to? Well, after you left this morning, I thought it'd be a good idea if I vacuumed the rug first. Oh, vacuum the... Roger, the rugs don't look as though they were clean. Well, uh, before I got to that, I started thinking that the furniture ought to be dusted. Oh, oh, so you dusted the furniture. Well, um, uh, I was just about to when I got to thinking how dirty the windows were. Yeah, they were awfully dirty. I'm glad you cleaned them. Uh, that was my intention. <laughs> what? Then I started thinking that I ought to wash the woodwork. 
But the woodwork is still dirty. I know. After all that thinking, I was a wreck. <laughs> well, this house is a mess. Why didn't you at least scrub the floors? I didn't even think about that. <laughs> Look, Roger, I don't mind your skipping the chores once in a while, but I've told you a thousand times that you must dust the piano every day. Well, why are you so particular about the piano? Well, supposing the Coleman's dropped in here unexpectedly and saw dust all over it. They'd never lend it to me again. <laughs> They're mad enough at me now. They're taking their milk from Ador. <laughs> so when I ask you to do something, I wish you... Rochester, why don't you answer the phone? I'm thinking about it. <laughs> Never mind, I'll answer it. Hello? Hey, Jackson. Ask me that question again. What? I couldn't stand it any longer. Go ahead, ask me. All right, all right. Who has the pink slip? Alice, I wear a blue one. <laughs> oh, Harris, the beer may be in your car, but the head is on your shoulders. <laughs> Straight, man. So goodbye, long. goodbye, goodbye. <laughs> Serves me right for answering the phone. I thought it was Mary. Oh, by the way, boss, how is Miss Livingston? Oh, she has a little touch of the flu, but she's getting better. Say, Rochester, I think I'll have dinner at home tonight. Uh, what's in the icebox? I'll take a look. Let's see. Turnip, lettuce, rhubarb, and 40 gallons of milk. <laughs> Oh, is there any meat in there? If you want to count my arm, yes! <laughs> oh, stop. I think I'll just have some... There's someone at the door. I'll get it. You just stand there and think. You know? <laughs> we were dancing to the music of the Tennessee Wall. When I stepped on Arthur Murray's big toe. <laughs> da da dee dum, da da dee dum. Oh, hello, Mr. Benny. Oh, hello, Dennis. Come on in. Dennis, I thought I just said goodbye to you a few minutes ago at rehearsal. I know, but there was something I forgot to ask you. What? Well, will it be all right if I miss rehearsal next Saturday? I guess so. Why? I'm going to commit suicide. <laughs> Suicide? I may miss the broadcast, too. <laughs> Dennis. Dennis, look at me. Huh? Dennis, how can you get such a crazy idea? I mean, why would you want to commit suicide? Well, my girlfriend told me she was through with me. Oh, well, maybe she was just teasing you. No, she meant it all right. She returned my engagement ring, my fraternity pin, and my skate key. <laughs> Your skate key? Oh, we've been going together for a long time. Dennis. Goodbye, Mr. Benny. It's been nice knowing you. Dennis, come back here. Huh? Now, that's enough of that silly talk. And you're not going to commit suicide. I'm not? Certainly not. You and your girl just had a little quarrel. You'll probably make up with her. Yeah, I guess you're right. Can I use your phone? Sure. Are you going to call your girl? So far as lawn, I want to cancel my reservation. <laughs> Look, Dennis, you don't have to call them. If you don't show up after a week or so, they'll know you've changed your mind. I'm sure. Geez, this is the third time they'll think I'm fickle. Yeah, fickle, fickle. Now, Dennis, at rehearsal, we were too busy to go over your song, but I'd like to hear it now. What are you going to sing? Heaven Can Wait. Now, cut that out! <laughs> And answer me sensibly, what are you going to sing? It's a recording of mine called Begilly Begali Begara. All right, go ahead. Sometimes he drives me crazy. <laughs> Mary, Mary, Begilly Begali Begara. Dennis, that was very good. Thank you. Oh, Mr. Benny, do you mind if I go home now? No, kid, believe me, I don't <laughs> mind. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, by the way, Dennis, say, I meant to ask you, 
Didn't you just finish a personal appearance in Las Vegas? Uh Uh-huh. I played two weeks at the last Frontier Hotel. And you want to know something, Mr. Benny? What? They paid me more money for two weeks than you pay me in a whole year. (laughs) Well, certainly, Dennis. But for me, you only have to sing one song. I know, but I have to get up so early to milk your cow. (laughs) Dennis. Then I have to sing to her to keep her contented. Dennis, go home, will you? Okay, goodbye. What a kid. I wonder... I wonder what they did pay him for playing in Las Vegas. I remember they offered me... Oh, Rochester! Yes, boss! What was that offer I had from the Flamingo Hotel in Las Vegas? Fifty cents a bundle, rough drive. <laughs> I don't mean that. Remember the time that... Come in. Oh, hello, Don. Hello, Jack. Come on in. And... Oh, Mel Blank, you're here, too. Yeah. <laughs> Come on in, fellas. Jack, after you left rehearsal, Mel told me he had a great idea for a commercial on the show. Isn't that right, Mel? Yeah. A commercial? Yeah. In fact, he's been working on the idea for several weeks now. Haven't you, Mel? Yeah. Well, what is this idea? Well, you know, Jack, Mel made a recording of I Thought I Saw Putty Tap. And he thinks it would make a very good commercial. Really? Yeah. Well, okay, Mel, let's hear this song of yours. Have you got the music with you? No. (laughs) Oh. But he can sing it from memory. Yeah. Well, go ahead, Mel, let's hear it. I am a little tiny bird, my name is Sweetie Pie. I live inside my bird cage, a hanging way up high. I like to swing up on my foot and sing my little song. But there's a cat who's effed on me and walk with me along. I tore, I tore a bloody cat and sweeping up on me. I dare, I tore a bloody cat and swing as he could be. I tore, I tore a walkie strike away and they blind me. I did, I tore a walkie strike as plain as it could be. So wound and firm and full, we packed and easy on the door. So very mild and tasty, too, the best I ever saw. With birds who know the battle best, it's lucky two to one. There's no what fuck, no fuck, it's what not even in a ton. I must admit the band in West me takes some play some day. I've halfway up on that old mic, and here's what I would say. Twins, if you're not happy with your pleasant cigarettes, it's time to change to Lucky Strike. Because Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. That's why Lucky tastes better than any other cigarette. So be happy. Go Lucky. Make your next carton a Lucky Strike. Well, how'd you like it, Jack? Oh, I thought it was pretty, too. I mean, pretty, too. In fact, I, uh... Uh, Don, I'm glad you brought Mel over. It was a good idea. Well, thanks, Jack. Come on now, Mel. Yeah. <laughs> good night, fellas. <laughs> oh, Rochester. 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 Yes, boss? I'm going in the library and read a while. You woke me up just to tell me that? (laughs) No, Your Highness, I want you to make me a sandwich. Okay. Well, let's see. What books have I got here? The Disenchanted... Memory and Desire, How to Raise Chicken, How to Raise Pig, How to Raise Turkey, How to Stop Raising Rabbits. Hmm. I don't know, I 
I'd like to read a mystery tonight. Say, here's one I don't think I've read. I was coerced. <laughs> by Maximilian Q. Langley. Gee, he's good. I think I'll read this one. Now look at the dedication by the author. This book is respectively dedicated to my three lovely children, Begilly, Begali, and Irving. <laughs> How sweet. Page one. I was coerced. To look at me as I sit behind my massive walnut desk in my luxurious Park Avenue office, surrounded by all the symbols of wealth and success, you wouldn't think that I, Montague J. Blackson, Attorney at law once sent an innocent man to prison for life. It all started two years ago. I had just come from court where I successfully pleaded the case of Mrs. Twomp versus Mr. Twomp. I not only won her the divorce, but the custody of their 26 children. It was clever of me to think of incompatibility. <laughs> As I was sitting in my office, the phone rang. I never should have asked her. It led me straight to the home of that eccentric millionaire... Eugene Patrick O'Day. Well, here I am, Mr. O'Day. You sent for me. Yes, yeah, sonny. I want to make out my will. Make out your will? Yep, and I've got a lot of money to leave, sonny. You know, everybody thinks I'm an eccentric old man. Oh, I don't think you're eccentric, Mr. O'Day. You don't? No. As a matter of fact, you look nice in that French bathing suit. <laughs> Thank you. Well, let's get on with my will. Yes, sir. I'll start writing it down in legal form. I, Eugene Patrick O'Day, being of sound mind... <laughs> That's a good one, eh, sonny? <laughs> to hereby will and bequeath... Tell me, what do you want to leave, sir? To all my servants and to all the shopkeepers in the neighborhood, I want to leave $5,000 each. I wanted to go to my butcher, my baker, everybody except my barber. I didn't want to leave him a thing. Oh, you're mad at your barber? Yep. Yesterday he came in to shave me and he cut off one of my ears. Oh, that's... Wait a minute. You've got two ears. Now, yes. <laughs> oh. To my wife, I want to leave $10 million in cash, my stocks and bonds, my yacht, and my skate key. Wow, $10 million. How did you make all that money? I just played two weeks in Las Vegas. <laughs> oh. A week later, with the completed will of my briefcase, I again started out for the O'Day Mansion. It was a nasty, miserable day. It was raining. The wind was howling. Then it began to thunder. It was the kind of a day that sound effects men love. <laughs> Suddenly, the sun burst through. <laughs> when I reached the eccentric millionaire's mansion, I rang the bell. 
Good evening. Are you the butler? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Is Mr. O'Day at home? Yes. Yeah. Well? Yeah, but you can't see him. He's busy. What's he doing? He's playing gin rummy with his dog. Gin rummy with his dog? <laughs> Fido is such a bad loser. Well, if you'll sit down, sir, I'll tell Mr. O'Day you're here. After the butler left the room, I sat there alone with my thoughts. When suddenly a door opened, and she walked. Hello, handsome. It was Mrs. O'Day, and she was young and beautiful. She looked like a million dollars. Tied with a tight string. <laughs> I couldn't believe that I got her on this show for a lousy 35 bucks. <laughs> she walked over to me and said, Are you Montague J. Blackstone, my husband's attorney? Yes, Mrs. O'Day, I am. Well, tell me, Monty, how much is my husband leaving me in his will? Ten million dollars. Ten million dollars? And a can of circus peanuts. <laughs> oh, goody. <laughs> You'll be a wealthy woman, Mrs. Day, but of course, it may be years before your husband dies. Not necessarily. He may go sooner than you think. You mean? Yes. Every morning this month, I've been giving him poison, arsenic, strychnine, prussic acid, and cyanide. Good heavens, how come he's still alive? Yesterday, I tried to drown him, and that was my big mistake. Why? His swimming pool is filled with hadakal. <laughs> When he came up for the third time, he looked wonderful. <laughs> I fell in love with her then and there. To you, this may seem awfully sudden, but the producer just motioned to me that we're running late. <laughs> so without wasting any time, I decided to help her carry out her murderous plan. Come on, Monty, let's see my husband. He's in his room playing cards. Walked down the long corridor to her husband's room, and I followed her. As she passed an open window, the breeze blew her skirt. That's when I first realized who had the pink slip. <laughs> Finally, we reached her husband's room and opened the door. Jim! <laughs> Again. Hello, Mr. O'Day. Hello there, Sonny. Hello, darling. We came in to say goodbye to you. Why? Are you going out? No, you are. <laughs> he didn't even wave goodbye. <laughs> yes, Mrs. O'Day and I killed her husband. But well, we framed it so that the police arrested the butler and charged him with murder. And I was appointed as lawyer, just as my writers planned it. I had no doubt that the judge would end. As I wanted it, I had no doubt that the case would end. Excuse me. because my brother was the judge. But when the case opened, I was surprised to see another man sitting on the bench. I walked up to him and said, Pardon me, are you the judge? <laughs> and now, let's listen to some happy figure skaters. I whirl and twirl upon my skates and do a fancy spin. Then cut these words right in the ice for taste those lucky twins. That's right. Lucky tastes better than any other cigarette. I teach my friends a way to skate and give them good advice. 
smoke better tasting Lucky Strike at home and on the ice. See for yourself, Lucky tastes better than any other cigarette. Be happy, so lucky, be happy, so lucky, strike, be happy, so lucky, so lucky, strike today. You know it's fun to smoke Lucky Strike because Lucky's taste better than any other cigarette. And here's why. Fine tobacco and only fine tobacco can give you perfect mildness and rich taste. And LSMFT, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Now, if you're not happy with your present cigarette, and a 38 city survey shows that millions are not, switch to Lucky Strike. Puff after puff, you'll always get complete smoking enjoyment. The perfect mildness and rich taste that only Lucky Strike can give you. So pick up a carton and prove to yourself. Lucky's taste better than any other cigarette. Yes, be happy. Go Lucky! Be happy, go Lucky, go Lucky Strike today. Remember, Lucky's taste better than any other cigarette. The Jack Benny program came to you transcribed. This is CBS. You've been listening to the OTR Gold Network. Find more classic radio at otrgold.com.